Hi there, I'm Matthew Guest. I'm the policy manager for Knowledge Exchange Skills and Place for Guild AG. Uh, that's the representative body for smaller and specialist universities and colleges. Um, what I'm going to talk about today are some of the um, unexpected aspects that uh, KEF flung up for smaller institutions. The story of the KEF for smaller institutions certainly went right back to uh, when it was first commissioned um, by Joe Johnson back in 2017 and when Research England developed that beyond the commercialisation framework into something that monitored all forms of knowledge exchange. And this is particularly important for specialist and smaller institutions which do a lot of really great work for their communities and public engagement and in local growth and regeneration. Um, and areas of knowledge exchange that are crucial but are often overlooked because they're frankly hard to measure. Um, I think what the first iteration of the KEF has done is it's shone a spotlight on some of the activities that take place. And it's also showed how intertwined with regions many of our members um, and many smaller institutions are. So take somewhere like Falmouth down in Cornwall. It had always said it was good at regional development. What the KEF does is it provides evidence for that um, through narrative statements and through the, the work that you can see that they're doing with the community. And uh, the really important thing um, that on the big policy level um, that comes out from KEF is putting public engagement and community engagement on the same footing as something like IP and commercialisation. Now, I said I was going to say a couple of unusual things that came up as well, um, and some of those are beyond the public and community engagement space. Um, I think what we, we saw um, was that there are some um, smaller specialist agricultural focused institutions, very, very strong on commercialisation and very strong on skills development. And that comes back into the picture of what a smaller institution does in trying to support its, its industries as well, even when they're in different parts of the country. There's something really interesting when we begin to look, though, at the public and community engagement initiatives that smaller institutions are engaged in. And you can begin to get that flavour of where it might be using old buildings um, that might have been run by councils and how they've become places to interface. It's crucial to sort of building into that wider development of a place. And that's really the main point I want to say today is that for a smaller institution, community, public engagement and local growth and regeneration are often a core part of what they do. I think that's a really great question and it probably depends who you talk to um, a little bit as well. Um, what really springs out is that there is a huge diversity within the specialist institution and smaller institution space. Something we've already we've known. I think what um, that risk um, could be and would have been is if everyone had been bunched together. So actually the clusters, whilst not 100% perfect, have been very, very helpful for beginning to differentiate different types of institution and doing that benchmarking for like um, institutions that are similar with one another. Um, you're able to get a bit of a bench that sense check on where, where you might be. And I think that's particularly helpful if you are in different parts of the country as well. Smaller institutions don't compete quite as much when by their very nature for, for student numbers because they have particular, um, the, they are smaller student bodies. So when you begin to remove some of the competition for recruitment, you can begin to really see where different, uh, what di one institution, one part of the country is doing is then springing and similar to what an institution might be doing in another part of the country. And that's pretty helpful for then seeing the different um, initiatives that different institutions can do and genuinely learn from one another. And that's something that comes about through the clustering um, effect. The, the risk, I think, is that if you had, if you were to move away from clustering now, that then you could group everyone together and it could be quite tricky um, to still see that special and distinctive contribution that institutions make. that it comes around to um, when um, when the cycle is for updating narrative statements. So smaller institutions do not have anywhere near as much um, capacity. There are very few of our members who have um, dedicated um, uh, public engagement professionals um, without them wearing another hat. So if this were to become quite a labour, the same labour intensive exercise that happened every year, and that could be quite problematic for just trying to get 
the, the best um, content through and divert away from the actual public engagement work. So I think that's one of the, the risks there. Um, in terms of um, looking through uh, some of the CAF reviews, uh, the sort of the suggestions for where things go begin to get interesting. And I think I'm particularly interested in the longer term view and where, um, where and what type of metrics could take some of the burden away and still provide something robust. And I think if anyone cracks that question quickly, um, that will be um, good going. In terms of the narrative statements um, themselves for public and community engagement, I was quite struck by the reflection that was made with the comparison with the local growth and regeneration, where um, some of the comments coming back were that local growth and regeneration offered a simpler template that then actually became an easier way to tell quite a short, succinct story in that space. Perhaps with some of the, the because the, the public and community um, engagement um, aspect had been that little bit more developed um, and there's a little bit more uh, understanding, I'd say, within the sector around what, what that is. In some ways, that's then made it harder to put together. The levelling up agenda adds something into um, the role of knowledge exchange and the focus that has perhaps been on knowledge exchange through the KEF through the KE Concordat and through the additional funding. The additional funding in particular is giving a really good opportunity to allow the full diversity of the higher education sector to maximise what it can do and in light of levelling up. And I think it's that definition of knowledge exchange that encompasses teaching, encompasses skills development, as, long, as well as public and community engagement that can allow smaller and specialist institutions to really drive forward their industries and to drive forward the places where they are. And that focus over the last year on the role of knowledge exchange in the higher education space has seen it drive up the policy agenda. And that's referenced back into things like the Leveling Up White Paper, like the innovation strategy that came out last year. There's a, there is a real sense that there's actually a, a the time is now to begin proving that worth again on what difference you can make if you are a higher education provider. One of the big challenges, um, particularly I think for um, public community engagement um, and, and to an extent local growth, is being able to capture the good work and the stories and, and the benefit, the positive benefit that an institution um, makes. That's kind of regardless of size. Um, I think it's particularly pertinent, though, if you are working in a smaller institution and you do not have the same capacity and your benefit that you're delivering can often be quite community focused. It's really important to think, how do we try and capture the work that we're doing in ways that make sense to the funder? Um, that's often what it can come down to, as well as, and I think this is the crucial part, how do we make those connections with our local leaders so that we can be seen as a, the place to come and support them in their levelling up challenges. Mm -hmm.